Okay, hello YouTube. Today we're going to be going over the dragon variation of the Sicilian after e4, c5, knight of 3, d6, d4, c, d4, knight d4, knight of 6, knight c3, g6 begins the dragon, and more specifically, we're going to be starting the classical dragon beginning with the move bishop to e2. So if you like content like this and you want to see more of it, please hit that subscribe button, click on your notification icon. So the classical dragon is actually kind of a big opening, and after a few more moves, we actually have kind of a huge stemming off point in the classical dragon after bishop g7, bishop e3, knight c6. We have a very big um, branching point here where white can basically play uh, one of about four setups that you're going to basically see. He can retreat the knight to b3 or choose to keep the knight on d4, and he can retreat the knight to b3 with the idea of playing f4, and castling, or he can retreat the knight to b3 with the idea of playing f4 and then g4 without castling. So these are all actually very different concepts. Uh, if he leaves the knight on d4, he has the option to play f4, and he has the option not to play f4. So basically there's two lines with the knight staying on d4, and there's basically two lines with the knight going back to b3. This is the easiest way to think of it. So Let's just say that white chooses this variation with pawn to f4, black castles, and white just decides not to play white, uh, knight b3, white instead castles. So this is one line that you have to face where they decide to castle and keep the knight on d4 and play the pawn to the f4 square. So how do you respond to this? Well, in this case, black actually has to respond with kind of a uh, scary-looking tactical reply, or at least to me it's scary-looking, is the move queen to b6. Now, generally speaking, uh, moves like queen b6, even though tons and tons of dragon players love playing moves like this, because it puts all of this direct pressure on white's camp, and it puts a lot of direct pressure on the dark squares, and it puts a lot of direct pressure on the center, and it sets up all these cool little tactical tricks. That's mainly what black is playing for. In fact, if white were to continue with some natural-looking move like queen d2, uh, black would instantly have a major advantage with the move knight takes e4. Uh, after knight takes e4, bishop d4, we get our piece back, plus we're up a pawn. This position should just be major advantage white without a whole lot to write home about, and it should be an easy enough position to convert. So that's kind of the main threat with queen b6, but my main issue with playing moves like this in general is whenever you play a move like queen b6, if the tactical uh, stuff doesn't work out, your queen will actually end up being very misplaced on the b6 square. Now in this case, theory seems to hold up that everything seems to work out for black here. So black should be okay regardless of what white plays. So let's just take a look at some of the variations white can try, because white can try an awful lot of different things here. So white can try the move uh, queen d3 instead of queen d2. This makes total sense. We're just going to protect the e4 pawn and just prevent that knight takes e4 tactic. Well, we have the secondary tactic in this position, and it's really nice that it's there. We have this move knight g4, which threatens to get rid of the dark squared bishop, and that would actually win material. So that kind of means that White has to do something. He either needs to counterattack the queen, or he needs to simply play bishop takes g4 and take the bishop. If he takes bishop takes g4, that knight on d4 is still hanging, so bishop d4 should just lead to some sort of equality. Like bishop d4, bishop d4, queen d4, queen d4, knight d4. A completely equal position. Uh, the best white can really do is play bishop d1 and hold the pawn. And then after bishop e6, this is just given as total equality here. Black is completely equalized, and uh, there's nothing wrong with black's position at all. So let's just go back and see what else could white try here. Uh, instead of the move uh, bishop g4, he could play the move knight d5. Now this gets kind of interesting. Uh, the best move here is probably to sacrifice the queen. Remember when I pointed out that the queen was misplaced? This is the reason why, is if moves like knight d5 come, uh, the queen is in a very, very precarious position. So we're kind of obligated, again, to do something very, very tactical here. We should actually sacrifice our whole queen. We should play bishop d4. And after bishop d4, they're going to take the queen. We're going to take the bishop with check. And after the king moves, we're going to take the knight. So we've sacrificed a queen, but we've actually gotten three pieces for the queen. And you might be wondering, like, why would anybody even try to play this as white. Well, for the longest time they thought maybe white's doing okay because they can take this knight and after you recapture they can play f5 and hey, doesn't this bishop look 
super awkward here on the g4 square. And it certainly does. It's not really clear how that bishop gets back or gets out. But as it turns out, black is actually just doing quite well here. Uh, black could continue with bishop h5, for example, and after rook e1, uh, black could plant his knight on the e5 square. He's got two anchored pieces, so it's just a question of safeguarding this bishop on h5 somehow and making sure it doesn't get trapped. But after queen h3, we can start trying to do that pretty easily. We can play f6, which really nails down this knight to the e5 square. And then we would have something like queen h4, bishop g4, that bishop is still safe for now, uh, rook f4, and then pawn to h5 is going to safeguard the bishop, and we're not going to get into any trouble here. So for example, f takes g6, knight takes g6, rook takes g4 takes, queen takes, king g7 is simply major advantage black. Black is doing absolutely spectacular here. So this queen sacrifice is supposed to be essentially good to go. So queen b6 works against both queen d2 and queen d3. What other things could they try here? Well, against king h1, the same tactic works. Knight takes e4 is simply major advantage black. So you have some other tries here that people have given a shot, like knight to a4, you're going to have queen a5, knight c3, queen b6. It's just equality. White, in theory, could repeat moves. If you wanted to play something different, um, I guess uh, black could actually deviate with rook d8. And he could continue to play for a win from here, just in case you're playing against a lower-rated player and you don't want to get a drop. Uh, but there, there's nothing with knight a4. So another move that could get tried here is this move e5. And people do try this. Uh, this is a move that especially gets tried on like the club level. People will try this move pawn to e5. It leads to kind of this complicated line, but the complicated line is supposed to favor black. So e5, we're going to have d takes e5, f takes e5, knight takes e5 is all supposed to favor black. Uh, knight f5, this is kind of the idea. Queen b2, knight takes e7 check. Now, interestingly enough, if this knight goes down into uh, g7, uh, the knight has no way out. So after knight takes g7, we can simply take a different piece, and there's no way for this knight to actually get out of the attack. So the people that try this or attempt to do this seriously will play knight takes e7 check, king h8, and then bishop to d4. But the move queen to b4 is pretty much decisive here. This knight is under attack, and we've kind of created an interesting counterattack sort of situation. So after, say, the move knight c8, there's also bishop e5, but this is fairly simple, just queen e7, queen d4, knight h5, takes, takes, bishop d3, bishop e6, should just be considered slight edge black, black is simply up a pawn here. So the other way that this can get played is this other move, knight to c8, and then we're just going to actually play rook d8, and we're going to pin that bishop to the queen, and we kind of have the same problem that we had in the other line, which is this knight effectively has no way out. So this position starts becoming very, very awkward. So we're going to have knight b5 and then rook a c8. If we're going to develop while we take it, well, we wanted to go to that square anyway, so why not? So rook a c8, and then we have all these pins are still in existence right now. The bishop is pinned, and all these pieces are hanging. We're kind of starting to have a serious issue here. So now we could play something like c3, uh, queen e7, queen b3, uh, pawn a6, and uh, this position should simply be considered uh, advantage black. Uh, black is just doing very, very well here. So basically to recap, Against this pawn to f4 move uh, with castle's kingside and without knight b3, the correct idea here is to play this uh, queen move, queen to b6, and these positions are supposed to be at least equal for black, or in a lot of cases, slight edge black if white doesn't play appropriately. I'll be trying to do maybe uh, three more videos on the uh, classical variation. I'm going to be covering the other ways that white can do this. I'm going to be covering uh, white uh, keeping his knight on d4 and not playing f4 and castling. I'm also going to be covering both ideas with knight b3, bringing the knight back to b3, playing f4 and castles, bringing the knight back to b3, playing f4 and g4 in some later videos. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new about chess, and I hope you can use some of these ideas in your own games. Thank you very much for watching.